How's it going, everybody? This is Chris Dorch, second again, coming to you from Media Team HQ, deep below the surface of the earth, here for the Chattanooga Film Festival's seventh annual edition and our first virtual edition. Uh, if you've been a fan of the festival for the past couple of years, you've noticed that we're big fans of the world of film podcasts. There's some truly incredible ones out there, and it's a great medium for, for folks to kind of give film a lot more love. And uh, of all the film podcasts out there, there are a few that I love, uh, and also am in, am, as am in, in fury by as as the one that's about to come uh, screen drafts I, I it's it's honestly one of my favorite things out there and I hope if you guys aren't familiar with them after you see what they do today you're immediately going to go and subscribe and become a big fan but uh it's a genuine honor to have Clay Keller and the and the folks of, of screen drafts here with us to do a live draft and uh so I think you guys are going to absolutely get a kick out of this again one of our favorite film podcasts so it's a real honor to have them shockwaves and junk food cinema joining us for our virtual edition I will turn it over to them. You're in very good hands. You guys are going to have a blast with this. Thanks to all of the Screen Drafts folks, and thanks, Clay. All right. Thank, thank all right. you. Thank you, Chris. What a Ooh. lovely introduction. Uh, and, and we are very, very excited to be joining you guys uh, for the 7th Chattanooga Film Festival uh, here under these very special circumstances. Um, but hey, it, it allowed us to co all come together here uh, from Los Angeles uh, and join you there in Chattanooga. Uh, gosh, guys, let's just get right into the show. Welcome to Screen Drafts, the podcast where experts and enthusiasts competitively collaborate in the creation of screen-centric best-of lists. I'm Draft Commissioner Clay Keller. Here with me, as always, my co-commissioner and color commentator, Mr. Ryan Marker. Ryan. Hello, hello, how are you? Thank you, Welcome. thank you. So happy to be here. So happy to be here. Wow. Uh, we are coming to you live from our usual recording space, the Aero Theater in Santa Monica. We are at opposite ends of a comically long <laughs> table. We've got a real Citizen Kane situation going on over here. Um, but uh, we're having a good time. R Ryan, have you, uh, are, have you cracked into a beer already? I have, I have. All right. <laughs> it turned noon and I was like, let's do it. It's I love Saturday. it. Uh, maybe I will join you in a bit. Right now, I'm enjoying... Uh, some coffee here. Look at that product placement. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that beautiful screen drafts mug. I wish I could get one. Oh, good, oh, I didn't even. I, <laughs> I Swag. I didn't Look even at realize. that. Um, all right, guys, we have uh, a massive uh, topic. Massive. So massive it had to be two shows. But even in 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 the first half that we're doing today, it is massive. So we are not going to mess around. We are going to get right into the heart of it, yeah. uh, and that's going to start with introducing our guest GMs for this draft. Uh, I'm gonna do them clockwise by what's on my screen. Uh, first up, we've got veteran drafter uh, and veteran of, as Chris said, infuriating people on this show, <laughs> Mr. Graham Skipper. Hi! Graham! Uh, Graham Skipper is an actor and director and, and uh, like everybody here today, no uh, stranger to the horror community. Uh, so we're excited to have him here. Uh, uh, next to him, again, according to my screen, I don't know what it looks like. Oh, actually, I can see the media thing. Okay, so next to him uh, is a first-time drafter, uh, but you know her uh, from the film Satanic Panic and is one of the co-hosts of DC Daily. It is Clark Wolf. Hey, everybody. So nice to see you. Thanks for having me, guys. Welcome, uh, and I am sorry. Uh, next up, uh, <laughs> the director, the director of Satanic Panic, uh, writer, director, Chelsea Stardust. Woo! Thanks for having me. Hi, guys. Welcome. Uh, and I will extend to you the same apology that I uh, uh, preemptively extended to Clark. <laughs> Because We're so you, sorry. you two are being thrown into the, the wolves' den here uh, for your first time drafting is not only a mega draft, but it is also a live show, and you are having to go up against uh, two of the craziest people to play this game. Of course, the other one I'm referring to is the host of Scripps Gone Wild, Mr. Billy Ray Bruton. Hi, guys. Billy Ray. Woo! Billy Ray, Graham. Uh, you guys are, are veterans of some of the most intense drafts we have ever done. Uh, and now you're coming in to tackle this really, uh, I mean, seminal topic. This is one of the, one of the biggest topics we're ever going to do in the history of this show. 70s horror, uh, probably, you know, uh, generally considered maybe the strongest decade ever for horror, the strongest decade ever for cinema, according uh, to some, and we and we're tackling this in, in you know what's what's big for our show, a mega draft, twenty slots. But if you look at it in a macro way, boiling down this entire decade to twenty slots, 
uh, is insane. Why, Billy Ray, why did you want to do this? Uh, uh, and, and then you actually, uh, you know, brought us to, uh, to, to Chit Chat New. You were sort of our emissary. And you really selected our panel of guest GMs for this. Uh, what was your impetus behind, behind all of this madness? Well, um, I love 70s horror films very, very much. And uh, I've, I've always thought of the idea of doing a decade-centric horror draft would be great. And if you're going to do one, you might as well do it for the best decade of horror ever, which I think is the 1970s. And of course, if I'm going to do that, I have to draft with my nemesis, Graham Skipper. And then I thought Clark and Chelsea would just be amazing fun to have drafting with us. That was just a no-brainer. Oh, stop. No brainer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Graham, uh, are you feeling trepidatious about this or are you feeling are you feeling confident? Well, a, a little bit of both. I mean, you know, I, I, I will say that because this is such a wealth of amazing films, uh, we kind of can't go wrong. You know, there, there's going to be uh, we're not going to have a dud on this list. Um, at the same time, I'm terrified because there are so many amazing movies that there are some stone cold classics that won't even break the top 20. Um, that I think some people are going to be pretty upset about. Uh, and uh, But but I, I'm really looking forward to it. I have been going back and forth. I've got a very complicated spreadsheet of all my choices and like some alternates and, and oh, if this one's not in, well, here's a similar one that maybe could go. And um, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm, and I'm also excited to, uh, to draft with, with Clark and Chelsea. I think that uh, we're going to have, have some real fun today. Uh, Graham, speak. I, I, I spent a lot of time on higher, point, higher. Uh, and photoshopping this graphic. Here we go. Oh, my um, handwriting it's, is illegible. Well, it's, it's also backwards. backwards. Poor, oh, poor Clay. Poor Clay. No, it's, you can't fix that, this buddy. Is, no, this is fine. Everybody just uh, pull up a mirror and read this. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. At Screen Drafts, hashtag Screen Drafts Live, hashtag Chat Film Fest. Uh, and chat, along, chat along and uh, yell at our drafters as we go. Clark. Yes, Kelsey, sir. Uh, I know that you've uh, been preparing this last week. Uh, are you, do you feel like you're ready to dive to into this? Uh, <laughs> Fix your sign. This is unacceptable behavior. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell was that? Uh, okay, yes, the, <laughs> the Chattanooga Film Festival demon chiming in there. Uh, uh, I, yeah, um, I, can I un... No, I'm not going to fuck with this during the show. I was going to start trying to unmirror my image. Uh, I think everybody got it. Uh, okay, Clark. Yes, sir. Kelsey, how are you feeling coming into this today? Are you are you confident on the choices that you're bringing in and your plan? Uh, are you worried about going up against two wild cards like Graham and Billy Ray? I think I'm. I think I'm ready. Uh, I've done a little prep. I've done. I listened to a couple episodes of the show to get ready. I feel like I know the people who we're drafting with fairly well. Some better than others, but still pretty well. Um, and uh, I have some strategy up my sleeve. So mm. we'll we'll mm. see how it goes. Okay, Chelsea, are you feeling the same way as as, as Clark? Yep, I would say so. Um, she's one of my best friends, so we were maybe talking. Oh, uh, oh no, oh. interesting. Interesting. So, you know, but uh, yeah, I feel really good. Actually, it's like like also what Graham and Billy were saying. It's such an incredible uh, decade of horror, and a lot of the movies made during that decade have inspired both of my movies. So um, I'm, I don't know. I think it's going to be a really fun list, and I'm so excited to be a part of it. Yes, I, I'm excited to see uh, for each drafter how much this decade is, so, is, is something that you uh, look at uh, uh, more academically, historically, looking for influences, and how many of these are like you're really passionate or like deep in your heart movies, uh, because those will influence uh, those will influence the final list. Because as, as I said, uh, Mike, some people come in really wanting to, uh, you know, uh, represent the canon, really wanting to get as broad of a spectrum as possible. You know, we're going international for this. This is Anything that was released in the United States in the 1970s and is a horror movie is in contention for this. So, uh, you know, the, there is a, a wide, wide spectrum of possibilities, and some people are going to want to capture all that. And some people 
uh, may just want to come in and say, I'm going to make this list look as much like my personal list as possible. Uh, and the conflict that we find therein is, is the joy of the show. R Ryan. Yes, sir. This is uh, a, 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 a almost uh, uh, a topic that is so grand to and it's almost foolish to try and tackle it. Yeah. Uh, when you were looking at this and looking at our players, yeah. wh what do you think we're going to see today? Well, I'm looking at four very like angelic faces and I'm just holding on to this image <laughs> because I feel like when we get to the other end of it, they're just going to look haggard and angry and just <laughs> like just completely disgruntled. So I'm, I'm loving that right now. Looking at, you know, what this topic is, yeah. I, I also think it's really smart that we've bifurcated this into two days. That way they can take a break and really understand what they've done and also <laughs> grieve. <laughs> and, and grieve. And also what, what is ahead. Left, right. left in our wake, yeah. yeah. So, yes, exactly. What is drafted today is going to narrow the pool of possibilities for tomorrow. And, and you guys will also have to endure 24 hours of uh, tweets uh, and emails, concerned <laughs> emails and calls from colleagues and friends yeah. uh, uh, and, and influences. I hope people try and influence you uh, in the period we have between today and tomorrow. I and accept to bribes. Content. I accept bribes. <laughs> Billy Ray is Billy Ray's PayPal is open and and uh, <laughs> open and waiting. Um, Hit me up. All right. Guys, without further ado, let's jump into the rules of the game. Uh, obviously, people who are listeners to the show uh, hear this speech every week, but uh, for people who are new, and I, I, I hope there are plenty of you, um, I will give you a rundown of what to expect today, uh, and then we're going to do our trivia round, and then we're going to get right into the picks. The screen drafts is a serpentine-style draft. Our four drafters are going to be alternating turns, placing picks on a single definitive best of list of this topic which is 70s horror movies uh how we determine the draft order is such ryan's gonna have trivia questions uh whoever of the four answers the first question correctly gets to uh decide their position first uh and then second third fourth so on down the list if you are drafter a you get four this is another this is for the whole game this is for the, all of the 20 picks if you are drafter a you get four, only four picks on the list, but you get the top pick. You get to place that number one pick uh, at the top of the list, and you get an extra veto, and I will explain the importance of vetoes uh, in a second. If you are drafter B, you get six overall picks. That's the most, but you get the second worst placement, uh, which means that uh, overall, out of the 20, most of your picks are going to be in the back half of the, or in the uh, front today. half of the list and will be today. Uh, the majority of your picks will be done on this show, not next week. If you are drafter A, you only get one pick today. All, almost all your picks are going to be in that top 10 uh, uh, slot tomorrow. If you are drafter C, you get five picks. Uh, you get the worst placement overall. You're again, most of your picks are going to be today. Uh, but you do get something called a veto override, which I will explain Yay! in a second. If you are drafter A, and it will be accompanied by that sound. Uh, if you are drafter D, you, uh, you get five picks as well, but you, three of them will be in the top 10. Yes, Vito and Vito over, I have graphics, uh, which the audience will be able to see. Uh, uh, we will not be able to see, but, um, I, I have every confidence in, uh, Tim and the team over there that they will look dope as hell. Uh, okay. Here's how Vito's Yay! work. <laughs> no, that's vetoes. We're talking vetoes, guys. There we go. There, go. <laughs> there we go. Uh, how vetoes work are if somebody uh, makes a, a choice at a slot that you disagree with, either because you think it should not be on the board or maybe because you think it just shouldn't be there, maybe it should be higher. Maybe you had different plans for it. I don't know. You can veto it. Now, it knocks that title off of that slot, but not out of the game. That original person puts it back in their deck and it could come up later, played by them or anybody else. Uh, how the veto override works is that if a Yay! veto is played on anyone else, on, if a veto is played on anyone else's turn, uh, you can destroy it. You cannot use a veto override to save yourself, but say if Graham plays something, Chelsea vetoes it, but Clark says, nope, I think that that should stay there. She can veto override. Yay! Uh, and it eliminates that veto and it locks that movie in at that spot and we move on so that is the power of the veto override uh Yay! everybody comes into the hey everyone comes into the game with one veto uh 
that that oh man you guys are getting good at that that a drafter gets that bonus veto uh and then a and then for next game for tomorrow for the top 10 there will be uh uh, a wrinkle that i will introduce at the end of the game that involves vetoes so uh, be aware of that um for this game because we want to keep it moving uh we are going to have each pick uh, follow a pretty standard outline. The person is going to make the pick. They're going to make their brief pitch, one or two minutes. There will be then th- about three minutes of open discussion, and then I am going to start prompting for vetoes, and there will be a particular order uh, that this is going to go in. It's going to be the order of who wins trivia. So if you won trivia, you have to go first in the veto order. And basically what that means is that after the open conversation, I'm gonna say, okay, vetoes, let's pretend Graham wins the trivia. He's gonna have to go first every time. I say, Graham, do you want to veto? And Graham has to decide before anybody else if he is going to use one of his precious, precious vetoes on this title. And then we will, oh man, you guys are fucking mm, on it. And then we're gonna go through, uh, go through like that every, every time. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know, guys. That's that's it. Are you, do, do the players Every have any questions about the rules? I have a question. Every yeah. single time. You can't let go by. <laughs> All of them. Thank, thank you, demon. <laughs> um, okay, so right. my question... <laughs> my question is uh if you want a specific uh like a specific position right a b c d um would it do you have to choose or do you want to answer the trivia question correctly in that order no, or you if, get to make your choice you choose the so position, we, yeah. okay. we will when we do the trivia everyone will will hang tight in terms of uh, proclaiming their choices for what for position we're just going to get who got first place second place third place fourth place that okay. will be the veto order and then that will also be the order in which people get to pick their draft position okay all right we Any... have to hold on to these sound effects after this show yeah uh yes I mean... uh, uh chris tim uh, if you guys can just mp3s send, send can us we also hold on to the demon picks. can we keep the demon we want yeah, the demon too <laughs> the demon is now an official member of the screen drafts family <laughs> fantastic <laughs> uh okay Boom, we are right on time. I said uh, introductions and rules should be done by minute 20. We are at minute there. 20 in we are. Excellent. incredible. Uh, okay, if there's no other questions, I think we are ready to get into the trivia. Yes. All right, let's do it. And re- remember, everybody out there, uh, if you're on Twitter, um, I'm not going to be interacting with that live, uh, but you guys can all uh, talk amongst yourselves during this uh, at Screen Drafts, hashtag Screen Drafts Live, hashtag Chat Film Fest. Ryan. Yes, sir. You've got a bunch of trivia questions ready. I do. Our drafters are ready. It is whoever just shouts out first. uh, And I'm going to keep track of the order. uh, And as I said, do not declare your, your, uh, you know, what draft position you want yet. We'll wait until after trivia is all done. We shout out our name or we shout out the answer. The answer. Shout out the answer because we can see everybody. We should be able to to tell who's saying what. Ryan. First question. Joan Crawford is a scientist who discovers the missing link in this, her final film. Link? No. Trog? Yep. It is Great job! job. Chelsea won that. Excellent job. Chelsea I'm exhausted. (laughs) I'm done. I'm spent. Okay, Chelsea gets the first question. That means, Chelsea, uh, you can sit back, uh, take a breather for a second, it is now down to our, our next three uh, remaining drafters for the second question. Second question. What was Toby Hooper's follow-up film after Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Thalem's Lot? No. Life Fun Force. House? No. No. It was neither oh. of those, Ryan? None of these. None of these. Really? Yeah, none of the above. Poltergeist? No. Ooh. Oh, God. Um, my so wait, you you said, did, wait, did you say after Texas Chainsaw Massacre? That's right. Oh, um... Eaten alive, Billy Ray. Billy Ray. Wow. Billy Ray. Yeah. I only had to name six different titles to get it. <laughs> His whole filmography was mentioned. Yeah. Look, if it? if nothing else, you guys both have have proven that you can name a lot of name Toby a lot Hooper of movies. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, okay, Billy Ray. All right, gets to Clark. Pick second, when we get here we to it, here we go. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Saving the best last, for last. Last for last pick for kickball always. <laughs> Graham and Clark. Last question. What was the 70s horror film where Dean Stockwell played a werewolf? 
Um, uh, uh, it's great. God. Dean Stockwell. God. I, Werewolf. I, Wolfen? No. No. It's 80s. Uh, the, the Beast Must Die? No. Three. No. Two. One. God. The film was called Werewolf of Washington. Never heard of that movie. Of Washington. <laughs> okay. okay. The demon uh, is, that, was that, is that DC backups. or is that state? <laughs> uh, it is DC, actually. Uh, copy. Okay, cool. <clears throat> was he of running course. for office? Of course. He's like, <laughs> sounds good. He's like a political insider who gets fit. Is it like the it's the Mr. Smith goes to Washington? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, final question. In which movie does Joan Collins fight giant mutant ants? Ants. Them? Them. No. Them. No. no. Uh, uh, God, um, <laughs> those are the only two I, giant ant movies I know. Uh, no, no, I'm, I have no answer here. <laughs> no, no. Ant Eater, Mans, One, Mans. Empire of, of the Ants. Empire of the Ants. Empire of the Ants. Oh, Empire right. of the ants. I got on. one more. This is pretty easy. <laughs> oh, I, God. Somebody I'm, better I'm, get this. <laughs> what, is the, what is the Killer Bunny Rabbits movie titled? Uh, Night of the Lupins. Night of the Lepus. <laughs> Graham got it. That's it. That's it. That's Good job, it. Graham. Lupins. Great I was job. like, I know it was the sun. Night of the Lupus. <laughs> there you go. Night of the Lupus sounds horrifying, though. I know people with <laughs> lupus. It is not a fun illness. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. So uh, the, uh, oh, God. the veto order, the veto order uh, in, in, in the trivia order, trivia winning order is as follows uh, Chelsea, Billy Ray, Graham. And then finally, Clark. So, Clark, you lost the trivia, but uh, when it comes veto time, you get to see what everybody else wants to do first. True, true. Okay. Now it is time to decide the draft order. Uh, A, B, C, or D. Chelsea, which would you prefer? Hmm. Uh, I'm torn between two, but I think I'm... I think I'm gonna go with D, actually. All right, oh, Chelsea. Good. Chelsea right. wants okay. D, so that means just five total picks. Yeah, three of them are in the top ten. Yep. Yes. Uh, she wants control you know, of that top ten. Wants control, control of the top of that ten. Top 10. Yeah. Uh, I like the way you play already. That's a, that, <laughs> yeah, people. You know, D doesn't look sexy because it doesn't have any you know bonus power ups, no additional yeah. blessings, but. You do, you do get to get to control that top 10. Cool. Um, I was debating between that and one other one, but I'm, one I stand by one. my choice. All right. Um, okay, All right. next like up, this. Mr. Billy Ray Bruton. <clears throat> um, I am going to go with... Oh, this is a tough one. I'm going to go with C, Clay. Okay. Billy Ray wants C. So that is also five picks, and it is the worst... It's the worst placement, uh, you know, considering the totality of the list. However, that means today Billy Ray is going to have a lot of picks, uh, and that means Billy Ray will have the veto override. This is correct. Fascinating. It's very, very important. Yeah. I'm sleeping. I'm sleeping. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> um, okay. Next up, Graham. This is exactly what I wanted. I wanted B. Okay. Fuck. Sorry, Clark. Sorry. All Graham right. gets B, which is the most picks. Damn. He gets six picks on this list. Yeah. Uh, You're welcome, they, Graham. They are Thank heavily you, today. Graham's going to have four today uh, and only two tomorrow, but it is six overall. That means that, Clark, you get to be drafter A, so you only get one pick today, but you do get three tomorrow. And you get that one. You, you get that number one. That's... Do you consider that uh, in honor or a curse? No, this is the opposite <laughs> of what I wanted. This is oh, literally oh, the opposite of what no. I wanted. Oh, oh, no. Oh, oh, no. Clark is going to have to make that number one pick, much to her chagrin. But Clark, you do get an extra veto. Okay, great. So, yeah. so, <laughs> okay, give and take. So, so Clark, uh, I'm, I'm curious, Clark, do you have a number one in mind of like, I want this number one? No, I actually really have more, uh, I have more skin in the game in the back 10. I was more interested in helping to shape oh. 20 through 10. Yeah. Um, because I have strong feelings 
about other things. So <laughs> this is the opposite of what I wanted, but that's okay. Uh, All right. Here we are. <laughs> Mark, you need to see Werewolf of Washington. Sure, I sure line. do. <laughs> Apparently, I I'm sure do. Point. That's what's going to happen, <sighs> Ryan, is, is, is uh, t t tonight, when, when everybody's recovering from today's show, all of our drafters are going to put on Werewolf of Washington, <laughs> and it's really, and it's going to fuck up everybody's plans DC, for, tom yes. for tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, Werewolf of, of DC is going to be is going to be the number five. Um, okay, God, Graham, Clark, Chelsea, Billy Ray, let's do this. Yep, we've done this. I should mention uh, the one rule I forgot to mention is the Mooch rule. That means that generally we do not include made for television or made for home video movies uh, unless we decide, agree beforehand. Now we all talked about this, uh, and I believe Billy Ray said, "Hey, should we include?" made for television stuff. I've got one or two in mind and everybody said that was fine. So if our pool wasn't big enough as it is, we are also accepting made for television movies. Mooch is waived. The, the, the Mooch rule for today uh, has been waived. Uh, and we are not doing our customary uh, commissioner predictions because in all of the prep for this and the flurry, I forgot to make any predictions. Uh, so no predictions for this one, maybe for tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Ian. All right. Uh, I have my picks ready. What does the air horn signify? We didn't yeah, talk about that beforehand. About I'm going to be trying it's to... It's so loud in our it signifies, in right, our It signifies the... The insanity that's about to happen. It yes, does it indeed. Does. And we will be taking a two or three minute intermission in the middle of today's show so everyone can refresh. Okay, let's get into it. Let's it's it. time. It's time for that number 20 pick that is going to kick today off. The number Ooh. 20 pick belongs to Drafter <sighs> C, which is Billy Ray Bruton. Is we Billy might Ray as well kick this thing off with a bang. When you are ready, uh, oh, you're no. going to, you're going to, either text or chat that over to me privately. Just did. I'm going to announce it. You're going to make your pitch, a little bit of open discussion, then the veto order. Uh, and vetoes for everybody, vetoes and veto overrides will obviously be shouted out when prompted. Okay, here we go. I've received Billy Ray's pick. Mm -hmm. Let's get into it. At number 20 on the Screen Drafts Chattanooga Film Festival 70s Horror Movie Mega Draft. Billy Ray Bruton has selected Eraserhead. Oh, yep, sure all right. yeah. Yep. Um, I'm playing this here because I've never been a big Eraserhead guy, um, in fairness. I love David Lynch. I love a lot of David Lynch. Eraserhead is never a film that really connected with me in any substantive way. I had a feeling it was going to make the list at some point, so I decided to play it here because I don't necessarily think it needs to be any higher than this. It's still a film that just, I, I've watched it, you know, multiple times. I've watched it with friends mostly who are always like, let's watch Eraserhead. It just doesn't work for me. It never has. I, I think it's it's a fine uh, example of what I think David Lynch would become as a filmmaker. But in terms of what it is, I find it lacking in, in a lot of ways. Um, I, you know, hopefully I won't get massacred on Twitter for playing it this low, but I very well could. Um, it's also just not very scary to me. So um, playing it at number 20, I think this is a good spot for it. And um, yeah, that's a racer head. Yeah, there's a, Billy, there's a broad range of, uh, of subgenres within horror. You know, there's the hardcore scary shit. There's the comedy shit. There's the musical shit. And there's the, you know, uh, uh, get under your skin, psychological, just uh, 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 strange shit, which is where Eraserhead certainly falls. Uh, everybody else, Eraserhead here at number 20. How do you feel about Eraserhead? Right. That's exactly where it needs to be. Correct. I would, I would agree with that. I'm a huge Lynch um, fan, but I, yeah. It was my, you said you, you are a huge Lynch fan. Me? You said, is that what you said, or did you say yeah, you Yeah, yeah. Wild yeah. at heart, weird on top, all the way. Yes. I'm, yeah, a huge I'm, a, Lynch fan. I'm a fan too. I'm a big fan too. Um, I'm a big fan too. That's why this was my number 10 pick. So Ooh. I'm a little disappointed it's this low, but that's okay. Uh, as we said, lots of amazing films are going to be on this list. <laughs> Um, but now I'm, I'm, I'm glad to get a little more of a sense of where, where we're at here. Okay. Okay. Graham's getting the lay of the land. Uh, everybody has already sort of intimated that they are not inclined to strike this one from the list, but Hey, we gotta, we gotta do our due diligence anyway. Let's take a look at the veto order. Chelsea. 
Um, no, yes, Chelsea, yes. I was looking at someone else. Chelsea. Uh, well, considering I've done a burlesque dance to In Heaven, Everything is Fine, <laughs> yes. I will wow. not be vetoing this pick. Okay, not vetoing. Billy Ray, you made the pick. That means we're going to Graham. Graham, are you going to veto this? Uh, I will not veto it, no. Okay. And finally, Clark, we end on you. Nope. All right. Easy peasy for that first one. Wow. Billy Ray, uh, no resistance to Eraser Head. The uh, seminal, that delights me. The seminal David Lynch film uh, is kicking off the list at number 20. Ryan, is this where you thought Eraser Head would be? Shocking. I honestly didn't even know. I mean, on one hand, like, I, I love that this is here. I don't know if anyone knows this, but Stanley Kubrick would show this before The Shining to the cast and crew and say, this is how you shoot a horror film. Um, but when I watch it, I have to say I do nothing but laugh. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. I love Eraser. It is really funny. So I'm, I'm a little surprised it's here, but totally happy it's here. I mean, this is a this is my favorite Lynch movie, to be quite honest. So wow. Um, oh yeah, love it. All right, David Lynch kicking us off at number twenty with Eraser Head. Uh, okay, here we go. We're moving on to pick number nineteen and then number eighteen, and both of them belong to our B drafter who is Graham Skipper. So Graham's going to give us two in a row here. Graham, are um, you texting me or are you chatting? I am. I'm about, no, I'm about to text you. Okay, um, so send me that I keep 19. going back and forth. All right, this is going to be ah, my number 19. There we go. Sent. All right. Oh. All right. See, I and have... this is hard. This is hard because with Eraser Head now at 20, it's like, oh my God, all of these have to be better than Eraser Head. It's a real, yeah. <laughs> Billy Ray set a very high bar. It's tough. <laughs> uh, it's tough. But I'm, I'm going to stand by this pick. I'm, I'm happy with this pick. All right, Graham was going bet between a couple, uh, and and yeah, it, it, it is uh, such a such a classic. There at number twenty, does sort of set set a high bar here uh, for the draft. This this is this kind of re reminds me of when we did uh, the uh, the um, twenty tens decade mega draft and uh darren fran kicked it off with a separation yeah that and was... then and then i felt uh even better about playing mamma mia here we go again right after it okay um it's a wild draft uh it was a wild draft at number 19 graham skipper has selected the abominable dr phoebes fives fives fives, fives. 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 The abominable dr fives uh yes uh yeah vincent price uh plays the abominable dr fives uh who uh lost his wife to a a uh, a botched surgery or, or a, a surgery that that he believes to be to have been botched um and so he uh he is also horribly disfigured by the same car crash that that ultimately killed his wife um oh fantastic i, I love the the image up there uh thank you yeah um oh, hey and um and so what uh, Dr. Fives ends up doing, uh, he's a, a brilliant um, a brilliant scientist and a brilliant plastic surgeon. And so he uh, begins to use as inspiration the 10 plagues of Egypt to murder all of the different nurses and doctors who participated in the bot surgery. Um, it's a wild movie. Uh, the set design and the art direction of this movie, I think, is like, it's so pure 70s, like, triptastic. Um, it's lots of primary colors. It's a very funny movie. Um, there's an amazing death where a guy gets impaled with a unicorn horn and, and then they have to unscrew the body off of the horn. And all you see is just like the feet, like going past the wall. It's very funny. I think it's one, it's one of my favorite Vincent Price movies. Um, and, uh, I think it's just really sort of indicative of, of kind of the, the wildness of the seventies. Um, and, uh, you know, I certainly wouldn't play it any higher than this. It would have been my number 20. Um, but, uh, uh, uh and, and I, I can't, you know, with any good conscience say that it's better than a racer head, but it's also completely different. Uh, you know, this was a studio film. Um, and, uh, I just, I, I, I just love how, how dreamlike and, uh, trippy and kind of psychedelic it is. And, uh, it's one of Vincent Price's great moments. Mm -hmm. So. All right, Vincent Price. Happy to see him on here, assuming he doesn't yep. get removed. Uh, let's just, you know what, let's just jump into, uh, from here on out, we'll just jump right into the veto order for the discussion, uh, and then everybody can kind of uh, say their piece, and then at the end of that, reveal if they will be vetoing uh, or not. So that means, Chelsea, we're going to kick off all of these uh, part, part two of the discussions with you. How do you feel about the abominable Dr. Fives? Well, that film was actually my number 19 pick on my list. 
My so there is no, no my veto day. from me. Because oh, it's man. literally on my sheet as 19. So, <laughs> so you're, a work, uh, you're a fan right. of this one. You're a fan of this one. Well, I'm a fan of Rise of Doctor Doctor Five's Rises Again. I actually Fantastic just recently, sequel. yep, great sequel. Recently revisited yep. this film, and uh, I also think it's maybe uh, influential, though very different. But I think it's uh, may have influenced had mm, some influence yeah, on sure. Seven. So yeah, for sure. Which is one of my favorite movies as well. So. But okay. no veto from Billy me. Ray. Also my number 19. That's three of us. <laughs> the number, also my number 19. Amazing. Also wow. my number 19. Incredible. Um, I had not seen this film since I was probably 12 or 13. <laughs> and I watched it for this draft and just fucking loved it so much. Like so, so much. It, it was one recently that was not on my list at all. And then I rewatched it and it made it onto the list. And so absolutely not going to veto this. This is the perfect spot for it. Wow. Uh, okay. Uh, it was also three out of our four. It was literally there. Nineteen. Uh, Clark, is is there any chance this was also your nineteen? It it wasn't on my list, but I don't have a problem with it on the list at nineteen. So I will not be vetoing it. No veto from from Clark. Are you a fan of of the film? I've never seen it. Ooh, not neither have I. Oh, it's really neither good. It's yeah, really fun. I'll add it to watch my party. yeah watch party for sure. All right, Ryan. Yes, sir. Uh, three out of four of our drafters put this at 19. Yeah. Uh, I have not seen it. It sounds incredible. Oh, uh, it's, it's Vincent's high point of his, of the seventies. We've shown it here at the arrow at midnight a few times and it always brings out quite a, quite a great crowd. Uh, Joseph Cotton's in it. He's fantastic. It's, it's, it's a high point. I mean, it's a very, very weirdly creepy movie and you're right. Super fun and funny as well. Just a great seventies movie. All Interesting. Around. So it's a, I on mean, my list, by the way. Uh, oh, okay. On, on, well, yes, you, you remember, which I did create, you so. remember to make predictions. Uh, I did not. I stayed I did very not. late last I'll night. I'll do predictions for tomorrow. I'll do predictions for tomorrow. Um, uh, so it's interesting because in, 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 in my mind, cause I, I have not seen a ton of Vincent Price movies to me, his stuff is, is, you know, generally fairly camp, you know, very funny, very entertaining. Maybe not always that scary. It sounds like this one, um, is perhaps actually pretty creepy it does all of that and above like everything yeah, yeah. that you just said it sort of does it all <laughs> it's funny it's scary really, about it too it's yeah. yeah it's really gruesome like it's it's yeah. really especially for the time like it, it, it's just very uh the the gore is is pretty intense it's and a the, shocking um, yeah yeah it's shocking but it's also funny and campy and silly and like it's, it's, and, it's, yeah. it's such right. a perfect midnight movie yeah. yeah yeah all right a perfect midnight movie starring uh the inimitable vincent price in at number 19 right from graham there go. Uh, well graham. okay so clay i'm about to text you yes next pick mm -hmm. um for this is oh number 18 God. yeah yeah um so clay this is uh i think would make a perfect double bill with the abominable dr fives okay <laughs> i'm intrigued okay <laughs> billy ray looks frightened oh uh... Uh, hold on. Uh, 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 okay, uh, there we go. Um, I'm writing this down. I like to write them down before I announce them here. So the text, the text uh, uh, came down and then it, you know, went away. So I think, I think I have this entire title. I don't, huh. I don't often say oh. this title, so it's not, it's not one that's in my, uh, that's in my head. Uh, Graham, you tweeted, you tweeted out uh, about a week ago that you were doing, you were watching this film for research, uh -huh. and even people who knew that this draft was coming were slow to pick up on the fact that that was, <laughs> that was for this. Um, okay, here we go. So you had number 19, you also have number 18. And with the 18th pick in the screen drafts, 70s horror draft, Graham Skipper has selected, uh, is it Salo or Salo? Sa oh. Salo. Oh Salo, or the 120 days of Sodom. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I think of all the films that are going to be on this list, uh, it <laughs> remains the most horrifying, uh, it's, it's, uh, near impossible to watch still, um, it's a masterpiece of cinema, um, and, and it is, um, you know, I, I, I had seen it once, like, back in college, and I think back then, you know, that my main takeaway was like, oh, it's where the people eat shit, um, <laughs> And which happens a lot in this movie. Um, and upon watching it again, um, I, I I was just so like stricken by how, you know, for a movie that was made, you know, in the seventies, like this this is just as affecting now uh, it, as as it would have been then. 
Um, it's it has a whole lot to say. It reminded me a lot of another film, which I actually like unironically really love, which is a Serbian film, um, which is another film, which is very, very, very difficult to watch. But they are saying something with it. And they say something like they're saying something pretty profound and they're doing it, you know, in that way, uh, which is which is hard to, uh, you know, hard to take. But but it's there. And I think that that's sort of what horror is all about for me is like really trying to say something, but through the lens of the genre. And with Salo, you know, he's talking about the Nazi occupation of Italy um, and about the total loss of uh, of of um, uh, agency that that the the people you know felt when that was happening, and it gets funneled through this lens um, of of you know Marquis de Sade's uh, most famous and horrific work. Um, yeah, it's it's a hard watch. Uh, I probably will never want to watch it again in my life. Uh, twice is more than enough. Uh, but I feel like on a list of the twenty. Uh, best and most important horror films of the 70s, uh, Sallow just feels like uh, it should be there. Okay, okay. I, I feel that is uh, indisputably horrifying, to be sure. Uh, Chelsea, you're up first. Did I, I assume you also had, had uh, Sallow at, at 18, yes? <laughs> I, I, I did not. Um, oh, oh, wow. I, I actually didn't have it on my main list. I had it on my little, I have like a smaller list. Um, sub list, okay. Sub list. Um, but I will say I have a very vivid memory of watching this movie in college on VHS while eating a bucket of fried chicken and <laughs> uh, with friends wow. and no napkins were allowed. So everyone was just covered with like this greasy chicken oh. shit all over their mouth. Um and uh, it had a pretty intense impact on me at the time. I haven't revisited it in a very long time. However, I do agree with Graham and think that it is a pretty, it's a controversial film. It's an important film for the 70s. Yeah. It is really intense, not for everybody, but I think it does. I think I will let it, I'll think I'll let it be on as, as number 18 for me. I think I'm good uh, with that. Did that, did that experience, uh, 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 give you like an odd uh, Pavlovian relationship with fried chicken? Has that ruined fried chicken for you? Oh no, just the opposite. No, not at all. Okay, perfect. <laughs> just um, the opposite. Just... <laughs> awesome, Billy Ray. <laughs> Billy Ray, uh, you yes, were you you were um, uh, indicating some of your feelings with your with your facial expressions while Graham was speaking. Uh, how do you feel about Sallow? Well, I had a feeling Graham was going to play this film. Um, Graham did tweet I don't, it out. He, I don't, Mr. Policeman, he gave yeah. us all the clues. <laughs> yeah, I don't personally, I don't personally enjoy this film. I mean, I think it, I think it's well made. I think it's fine. I saw it once. Also, when I was in college, never felt the need to see it again. I uh, still have vivid memories of it, uh, which only furthers the idea that I don't need to see it again. Um, yeah, was not on my list. Not a film that I particularly like, but I mean, I'm not going to dispute that it has a resonance and has a, you know, that should have maybe have a spot on this list, especially since it's so low. I'm going to let it stand. All right. Uh, that leaves only Clark. So I will say that my tw numbers 20 through 15 were essentially like, it strategically placed and kind of feeling like, all right, if we have to put stuff on this list, like I want it to be here and not there. So I, I don't care that this is here. So, so I'm not going to veto it. Cool. All right. Like uh, Clark, like Clark is, is not offended, at least by the placement. <laughs> of uh, uh, and no resistance from Billy Ray either. Uh, so uh, there you go, Graham. Were, were you anticipating being able to get uh, Sallow on, on the list here? Um, if it had been higher up, I, I would have imagined it would have gotten gotten cut. Um, that's why I played it so low. Uh, and I wouldn't have played it any higher than this anyway. I, I uh, uh, Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that it's on here. I think it's an important film. And I think that, you know, in addition to, to films that are enjoyable to watch, uh, we should also give a little nod to some of the films that are not enjoyable to watch. So. Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, Ryan. Yeah. How do you feel about the not enjoyable to watch Sallow I'm, I, at 18? I'm speechless that it's here. Uh, however, I have to say, like, this really, for me, personally speaking, kind of just weirdly validates this list where I didn't think it needed that. However, I mean, I'm really, yeah. really... This is a classy list now. It's not so much... I mean, I'm just saying <laughs> he's right that this is a truly horrific film when you think of what the 70s put out there. I mean, right. I don't think there are 
few films that I can think of. Honestly, be, being a manager here at the Arrow Theater, I can tell you this is the hardest introduction I've ever given to a movie <laughs> ever. Yeah, you played this uh, within the last year. Well, we did a Pasolini you? retrospective, right. and we opened with Solo, which just like blew my mind. You in and opened of itself. with Solo? We opened with Solo. <laughs> oh I think they just wanted to put it on a Thursday night so that we just get it done. <laughs> but I mean, still, yeah. like it was uh, a, a big undertaking just to kind of, you know, contextualize this. Yeah. Did, did you have a big crowd? We had a good, we had a good sized crowd. Yeah, it was about a quarter filled in here, so that was a, a wild night. Uh, regardless, um, Graham, kudos to you. Yeah. Kudos to you. In uh, several months, when the arrow starts to soft open, you should just program three weeks of sallow. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, people will be safely socially distanced. Okay. <laughs> We're three picks in. Yep. We have heard uh, from Billy Ray and Graham, and now it is time to get our first pick from a new drafter to the game. It belongs to Chelsea. Chelsea's got, excuse me, the number 17 pick. And Chelsea, whenever you are ready, uh, okay, here we go. I've got it in the chat window. All right. All right. Perfect. Holding my breath. <laughs> Ryan is holding his breath. Uh, here we go. This is Chelsea. Perfect. Okay. At number 17, Chelsea Stardust has selected a film that Graham texted me, texted Billy Ray, and I have heard anecdotally, I think asked at least one other person if this would qualify for this oh. draft. Uh, and if Chelsea is playing it, it seems like maybe uh, she thinks it will. Uh, at number 17, yes. Chelsea has selected the Rocky Horror Picture show yes Bravo. yes thank you yes. um okay i got a little bit of a thing to say about this movie so cool. the first time i ever heard of what rocky horror picture show was my parents owned the vhs it was a black tape with the lips on the front the back of it was a mansion decrepit i was like what is this and they're like oh you can't watch that <laughs> um so immediately i wanted to watch it and uh it's a huge part of my life i was i've been in the live show of it um but I think that Rocky Horror Picture Show, it has body horror, cannibalism, science fiction, horror in the fucking title. It is a gateway horror film for queer horror cinema, horror, and there's full of horror references, sci-fi references galore, screen queen references, mad scientists, Frankenstein monsters, aliens, sexual awakening is transmitted, uh, scary mansions, and the sexually, it's sexually perverse in a way that would make Cronenberg blush. <laughs> um, and it's transgressive, just like all horror movies should be. And the message at the end, don't dream it, be it, is one of the best things for a young horror fan, horror lover. It is, I think, the sort of seminal gateway horror drug for um, youngsters. <laughs> 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 and it uh, it even, so so maybe is the first horror musical. The stage musical premiered in 1973 in London, which was before Phantom of the Paradise came out. So something to keep in mind. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's my, and of course it's an incredible cast and uh, there's such darkness in it. And for me, there were so many things when I first watched it that I wanted to seek out. I was like, who's Faye Ray? Like who's, hmm. and it sent me down this rabbit hole mm. of other horror movies, science fiction movies. Um, and yes, it is a musical and yes, it is a comedy. And yes, it's sort of so many genres mashed into one, but, uh, and it is the midnight movie of all midnight movies. So, Thank you for coming to my TED talk. All <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, right. Thank you so much. Beautifully said, uh, Chelsea. Rocky Horror Picture Show, Billy Ray. Well, you know, when Graham messaged me about this and asked me if I thought this would qualify, I said no, that I did not. But, you know, listening to Chelsea and her TED talk, you know, she makes a lot of good points. <laughs> and I I, did, I I had already decided that I probably wasn't going to veto this if it made the list, just because I do agree that it's gateway horror for a lot of people. I think that's important. And also, I just fucking love the movie. Regardless, I think it's an amazing movie. So um, even if I had like a 2% part of me that was going to veto it, that was squashed by that beautifully impassioned <laughs> uh, case for Rocky Horror Picture Show. I shall let it stand. All right, Billy Ray Thank is letting you. it stand. Uh, hey, uh, we're moving over to Graham. Graham, who, look, I, uh, 
cards on the table. The reason I bring on experts for these uh, is that uh, uh, I am, you know, I've seen a lot of shit. I haven't seen it all. I had never seen Rocky Horror Picture Show until last night. Uh, oh and my I watched gosh. it to prepare for this. I look, I, I was, even though I was a theater kid, I was very uh, squeamish about social interaction. So whenever I would get invited <laughs> to see Rocky Horror Picture Show and they'd be like, oh, but if it's your first time, they're going to haze you and take your clothes off and, and make, you know, all this stuff. It just, ter it terrified me. So I have avoided it. Um, but watching it last night, it is so, uh, Chelsea, everything you said was, was so spot on. It is so much, uh, it, it, it is campy and funny and weird, but it is so just embodying the soul of, of outsiderness and strangeness and horror and the unexpected. And it is creepy. I thought there's stuff that is genuinely creepy in this movie. So uh, I absolutely think uh, uh, that it that it uh, belongs on this list. Graham, you, you run a whole live event in Los Angeles mm -hmm. that feels like this come to life. So I imagine you must be pleased as punch. I'm very pleased. This is also my number 17. Uh, so... It's perfect. Wow, uh, Ryan his met. I know. Damn I, it. I damn it. I, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with everything that Chelsea said. She said it way more eloquently than I ever could. Uh, yeah, I, I love this, and I think that um, you know, not not just as like a musical theater guy, but also just if you look at like like the overall impact that all of these twenty movies that we're listing have had on like culture as a whole. I mean, you don't have to be a horror fan, nor do you have to be a musical theater person to to know what Rocky Horror is. You know, everybody knows the time warp, right. you know? Everybody has seen Dr. Frankenfurter, um, you know, and, and knows what that image is. And and uh, not to mention, I mean, speaking of Frankenfurter, I mean, not to mention like the performances in this movie, you know, are just like all time classics. Yeah, um, yeah it's, it's uh, uh, you can't say enough about this. It's a great film. And Clay, I just want to echo what I said to you to convince you to watch it um, when, when you had said you hadn't seen it, is that, I think there's this common misconception that people are like, oh, you have to see it live. The first time you see it, you got to see it live. It's only it's really only really good if you see it in a live setting. And I completely no. disagree. I think I that too. it's, yeah. Yeah. Yep, you know, same. You, you can totally sit there and watch it at home and have a total blast with yeah. it. Um, so watching it so, last night, I, I had the thought, I was like, if I was watching this live and there was a lot of distraction going on, it, it might annoy me. That is like, they, you, I mean, it is a midnight movie for sure, but it is not a midnight movie like The Room is a midnight movie. There is so much craft in this movie. And it, this, the, the, the music is excellently done. And, and as you said, the performances are, are really astounding. Like to, to give believable, grounded, full-bodied performances uh, straight-faced with this material, uh, you know, uh, it's incredible. Tim Curry's astounding. Clark, how do you feel about Rocky Horror Picture Show? I also had a feeling that this was going to be on the list. And uh, this is, I, I have to agree, I think this is about the place that it belongs on the list. And uh, I agree with everything that's been said before. The, the music in this movie is exceptional. Like, I don't think that, it kind of blows my mind how good this music is and how it does. I was at the um, TCA presentation for Fox when Fox was doing their live Rocky Horror thing. Mm -hmm. And the mu and so it was in the interstitial time when they were changing over the sets and bringing out different casts. So, and the music was playing overhead and it didn't matter who was singing it. It was just, it's timeless. Like it's so, so good. And on top of that, um, I, I think Chelsea makes a wonderful point about gateway horror and also the um, like sci-fi elements and the horrific things that are in this movie. This is a hard R. This is not like yeah. some, you know, squeaky clean thing that, oh, it was risque at the time. Like this is a legit, yeah. like, yeah. you know, um, counterculture fuck you movie. Yeah, it's great. I mean, well, and that's not a bad thing either. So anyway, uh, I think it stands. I do not veto it. I think it stands. Yay. All right. Congratulations to the Rocky Horror Picture Show locking in at number 17 on I'm done. The that's what I wanted list. to plant my flag in. All right. Uh, the rest of this is gravy for, yeah. for, uh, for Kelsey. Um, uh, Ryan. Yeah. Rocky Horror. Have you been in? Have you done? Have you been in Rocky Horror? I've not been in it, okay. but I've seen it live a bunch of times, and I've done the movie at the New Art uh, a few times. Um, it's, it's it is the quintessential midnight movie. I think it is a horror movie just simply because the greatest of horror is subversive, transgressive, does all the things that invites everyone in if you let it. And I just think, like Chelsea said, such a great. Um, 
sort of testimonial as far as the experience of what Rocky Horror does. I think it's sort of like, you know, I feel like horror is a club <coughs> that if you're cool enough, it'll let you in and you can kind of enjoy it. And I yeah. feel like what better thing it, to 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 do that than Rocky Horror. I mean, if, yeah. if you go into Rocky Horror at a midnight show at the New Art, I, you will walk out going the opposite of what you thought, Clay, where you're like, I'm so happy I was a part of that. We are all fans and we are all in that shit together. It's a, it's a really wonderful experience. Uh, but we'll I, do it together at the New Art. We'll do it you. together. Well, I have to now. Yeah. Uh, but I will say for any other nervous Nancys out there who were, were like me, uh, this is just yeah. a legit watch fucking movie. Home, you can sure. watch it just as a movie and it's it's fantastic okay and just and just a quick note i might be one of the few people who actually really enjoy shock treatment as well <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty yes. fun yeah yeah it's, a fun uh, movie. it's got its moments yeah yeah all right okay well there we go at number 17 rocky oh. Horror. Uh, the next pick up is the number 16 pick right uh and and if you hadn't guessed from <laughs> billy ray's dramatic <laughs> sigh it belongs to Billy Ray. This will also be our final pick before we take just a couple minute intermission uh, here in the middle of the show. Billy Ray, when you are ready, win. I'm trying to decide if I need to go with my head or my heart in this case. Um, oh, that's a tough one. This is the, uh, That's a conundrum that you run into often it's on this true. show, Billy it's Ray. A, drafter, should I go with my head or my heart? Ooh, Always your heart. heart. Always heart. your heart. Yeah. Heart? Okay. Clark does not want to Clark's commit. Safe. She wants to see. She wants to see what bullshit you've got up your sleeve right. before she commits. There we go. Okay, I have got it here. Got it. All right, here we go. This is one that, uh, as I said before, I will always cop to being a bit of a neophyte. I'm much more the enthusiast side uh, of the description of the podcast, so I've not seen this, but I'm very excited to hear Billy Ray tell us about it. Billy Ray, again, did you say this was the head or the heart pick? This is the heart pick. All right, here we go. Billy Ray following his heart at number 16 has selected Death Dream, AKA Dead of Night. <laughs> this is the 1974 film written and directed by Bob Clark who would go on to do, who did Black Christmas, uh, Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things, Christmas Story, all that stuff. Um, this movie has such a haunting, like uneasy feeling. The name of the movie, uh, oh, that wasn't the demon. The name of the movie is Death Dream or Dead of Night by Bob Clark. What year did you say, Billy Ray? 1974. 1974. Interesting. It, it is, a, okay, so a general plot summation is uh, you've got the main character who is uh, killed in Vietnam. And as he dies, he there's this kind of weird sort of ethereal moment where he hears his mo mother's voice talking to him and telling him that um, you have to come back. You promise that you come back. And then we cut back to his home and we see his parents get the notification that he's died. And of course, they're all you know, just devastated about his death. And um, then he shows up on their front door, fully in uniform and uh, not dead oh. as they thought he was. And so they just assume that it's some sort of clerical error, but something is off with him. He's not quite right. Um, there's this sort of like disconnected quality to him. He, he has no emotion. He doesn't engage. And then as, as, as you would expect, people start dying. And uh, he slowly starts turning more and more and more into kind of this ghoulish, undead character. I think this film is so smart for a lot of reasons. I think it's playing on a lot of different things. I think it's playing on um, uh, PTSD. I think it's playing on a lot of PTSD, especially with what soldiers coming back from Vietnam were playing with and the effect that that has on families. It's just doing it in, in the guise of a horror film. Um, you know, I personally think, uh, I said earlier, I misspoke, I said Bob Clark wrote this. He did not, he just directed it. But um, I am so fascinated with Bob Clark's career as a director. I think he was one of the most unique voices as a director. I think he did such varied films and they were all, for the most part, especially his early stuff was really successful. And of course he died super young and wasn't able to keep directing. But this film to me, just everything about it, the sound design, the, the music, it's all so like stilted and bizarre and almost doesn't seem like they fit together, which makes them fit together entirely. And um, I, I've been a fan of this film since I was really young. And, and this is actually, this was the, maybe the, 
it wasn't the first Bob Clark film I saw, but this was the one that really got me going deep on him. Um, yeah, I love this film. If people haven't seen it, they should check it out. It's called, uh, it's called, uh, uh, shit, uh, death dream, but it's also known as dead of night. So it, you, you might see it in, in different locations as either dead of night or death dream. Right. But, um, yeah, I absolutely, it's, 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 it's inspired by the monkey's paw short story. So it's got a lot of that in common, mm. but it's, it's a okay. totally different thing. Um, I love this film. Uh, I think 16 is a good spot for it. This was absolutely my heart pick. All right, Billy Ray going with his heart, an allegory for the horrors of war and PTSD. Uh, Chelsea. Um, That's a dream. I, based on the initial reaction from the other drafters, uh, this this could be our first uh, our first interesting uh, veto order. But, you know, I, I, we'll see. I, I don't want to influence anybody. Chelsea, uh, how do you feel about this? I love a TED Talk. Uh, here for it. Um, I, uh, I actually, I'm a huge Bob Clark fan, but I actually have not seen Death Dream. Oh. Um, and now I need to after hearing about it. Um, and because I haven't seen it, I don't think I necessarily can veto it because of that. I don't think that's the, uh, would be the wisest choice. So I'm going to take your TED talk at heart and not give this a veto. All right, Chelsea, swayed by Billy Ray's passionate speech. Graham, were you are you equally uh, susceptible to the uh, the silver tongue of Mr. Billy so, Ray Bruton? So uh, I, I love Billy Ray's tongue. Um, <laughs> I, and um, I so here, Death Dream is a great movie. It's really good. Uh, everything that Billy Ray said is correct about it. I, I do not dispute it. Um, the thing I'm struggling with is that I have a strong suspicion that another Bob Clark film may show up later <laughs> on this list. And so I I have to wonder if it's responsible to have two Bob Clark movies in an already crowded field of, of potential 70s horror films. Um, I, I am... Uh, oof, it's, it's, it is 16, but it's also... I mean, this is... He's playing Death Dream after Rocky Horror and Eraserhead. And Dr. I mean, <laughs> I mean, come on, oh man! You know, I uh, let's add some pizzazz to this. Veto. Oh, oh God damn it! Hey. God damn All it! Right. Uh, <laughs> hey, there you go. Uh, Graham used <laughs> Graham used his veto to knock off Death Dream. Uh, Clark, w w were you considering doing the same? No. Hmm. All right, Clark would not have vetoed. Uh, so Graham, uh, <laughs> but I'm glad he did it. I'm glad. Yes. I think I think that was the right choice. I I yeah. do like and and admittedly, I have not seen this one. Uh, but I also love Bob Clark as a director and um, really love his genre stuff. So we'll absolutely be checking it out. Um, but I think Graham makes actually a great point in that this is a really crowded list and if we burn these slots, like, you know, that doesn't yeah. leave room for other things. So yeah. I, I guess I my, I guess my rebuttal that to be, if we were doing, if we were doing a sixties <laughs> thriller draft and we had two Hitchcock films on there, like sometimes you have multiple directors that are going to be on the draft That's because true. they have, but I do have my like, list. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, Billy I, Ray, That's you can bad. rebut, you can rebut till the cows come yeah, home. Exactly. What I need from you is a replacement <laughs> 16. Sorry, Billy Ray had to happen. Had to happen. And of course, I will remind the audience, uh, this does not mean that Death Dream is now completely, completely out of the game. You know, it is just now. It's out of the game. Out there. It's out of the it's game. Floating out there. <laughs> oh. Oh. Play it higher oh. than this. I can't play it higher than this. All right, Billy But Ray. I can play this. Uh-oh. Billy Ray sending <laughs> what you. What have I done? Yeah. Okay. That is, yes, that is also the risk you run, Graham. <laughs> Uh, when you veto Billy Ray, there is no guarantee that what is coming uh, down the pike is going to be more pleasing. Uh, okay, here we go. At number 16, uh, bringing us into the intermission, replacing Death Dream, Billy Ray has selected a movie that he has already tried to get on this show in the past uh, and was unsuccessful. Let's find out if he's successful this time. This movie is called Faces of Death. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> okay. Faces of Death. Quickly, 19, Faces of Death, Billy. It is a 1978 faux documentary 
which basically presents itself as a compilation of footage about actual real life deaths. It was uh, directed by John Allen Schwartz and written by John Allen Schwartz. And um, th- if you were a kid in the eighties, <laughs> this was a rite of passage. Like getting this VHS tape Clark was a so rite of passage. <laughs> and yeah. you, you, it was, it was something that you looked for. Your like your your older brother or that your cousin would tell you about. Yo, have you seen Faces of Death? Have you seen Faces of Death? And um, I remember the first time I saw it. There's a whole series of these. Um, I remember the first time I saw it, and I, I was, I think, like most kids, underwhelmed by what I saw. But the more I've, the more I've watched it over the years, the more I appreciate exactly what it was and what it was trying to do. And I think it is when we're talking about influential horror films from the '70s, this is this is up there. Like this is a, was an influential film to a lot of kids, to a lot of budding horror fans, and to, and to people who just loved underground shit. Faces of Death is what is what really reached out to you. Some of the scenes in here are really effective. Some of them are not. Some of them are actual death scenes, and a lot of them are staged. Like you think about the popular scenes, like the monkey brain scene or things like that, that are not you know that are not real. And then you you know you have some where like the the, the guy getting hit by the car, which is and like it's 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 a mix, which is I think also what makes it interesting, is uh, the parts that are real versus the parts that are not. And I, I just think this is. Uh, a good spot for this I, I i actually probably you know might have played it a little bit lower but no i'm actually happy that this is above a racer head because i respond to this film better than i respond All to right Eraserhead. according to billy ray a um, better film than a racer head that's right faces of <laughs> <laughs> chelsea chelsea faces of death uh graham had a big reaction clark had a big reaction uh, I, I was, I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't uh, pick out your reaction as easily. How do you feel about Faces of Death? Uh, I just like too many movies in general. Um, is it better than Rocky Horror Picture Show? Absolutely fucking not. But <laughs> I only have one veto and I don't know if I want to use it on that. Hmm. So and now Billy Ray has shown what kind of player you know. he is. Exactly. Graham, you do not have a veto. I, 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 do, you, do you want to uh, say anything that may influence Clark? Um, I, uh, you know, I, I guess if I had to choose between this and Death Dream being on here, I would probably choose this because I accept that it is a famous movie and I accept the mm-hmm. rite of passage yeah. argument. Um, it's, it's not a good movie, uh, which is, you know, the, the hard part here, but it is an important movie. I will give it that. So, uh, that's all I'll say, Clark, uh, it's up, it's up to you. Yeah. Yeah. So what I would say is I've never been the type of horror fan that needs to survive the rite of passage thing. Like I have no problem if I get into something, go, nope, I'm not watching this. I just turn it off. Uh, I, I'm just not, I'm not, I'm not that horror fan. I, I rolled my eyes because my very <laughs> uh, emo brother was very into this movie. And so I just was like, oh, God. Yeah, we get it. Um, <laughs> but that said, I, I'm not, first of all, I'm not burning a veto. And second of all, I do agree with Billy Ray's argument in terms of like importance. Everybody's heard of this. This is yeah. the rite of passage thing is a thing. Um, it's probably a little high if we, if we mm-hmm. knew what we were evaluating, yeah. but I'm not, I'm not vetoing this. All right. No veto from Clark. We are in, that's faces of death. They, uh, uh, and it that finally is, made it. It, it made, made, it made it on there. And, and, <laughs> and that is a full quarter of the list thus far. Uh, we are going to take a very quick, about three minute intermission, uh, uh, and come back. And then we're going to do the, the, the last five picks here. Uh, pretty briskly, but I, I think we can do it, everybody. Uh, right now, the list is as such. Number 20, Eraserhead. <laughs> Number 19, The Abominable Dr. Fibes. Number 18, Solo, or The 120 20 Days of Sodom. Number 17, The Rocky Horror Picture Show. And number 16, Faces of Death. We'll be back with the next five picks uh, after this quick intermission.
guys want to jump back in. Okay. Wow. I hope everybody itched. That was that was quite something. That 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 little uh, <laughs> it's our uh, finest intermission ever. Yeah. Right? That was that was incredible. Um. Okay. Hey, we are Rufus. back. Um, we are back with Clark Rufus Rufus a partner. <laughs> <laughs> it's Max from the Grinch. Yeah. All right. Uh, Aww. Clark has brought in a a helper here. Uh, My so reinforcements. We'll reinforces here that helps her uh, in the top half of the list. Here we got. <laughs> Uh, Clark Wolf, Graham Skipper, Chelsea Stardust, and Billy Ray Bruton. Uh, here's the lay of the land going forward for the rest of this episode. Uh, let's see here. Um, there are five picks left. Two of them belong to Graham, uh, and one each belongs to Billy Ray, Chelsea, and then Clark is finally going to get her first yes. pick coming up soon wow. here. Uh, here's the veto situation. She's been silently judging. Clark has, <laughs> Clark's got two vetoes. Uh, Graham used his. Billy Ray's got one veto. Chelsea's got a veto. Uh, and of course, uh, Billy Ray also has a veto override should he choose to use it. Uh, okay. Um, let's see here. I'm getting ready for the second half of this list. I'm excited. Ryan, are you ready? I'm, I'm great. <laughs> Brian's ready. <laughs> Your theatrics uh, always delight me. Look, if we're going to bring the podcast to <laughs> to a visual medium, it's true. May as well <laughs> do a gag or two. Um, okay, here we go. We're at number fifteen. This pick belongs to Graham. Graham, whenever you are ready, send me your pick at number fifteen. All right, guys. There's no more playing around. We're getting real here. We're getting real. Fuck this yeah. is top fifteen. Oh. Eh, maybe, <laughs> guys. The time to fuck around, according to Graham, has ended. Yeah. Billy Ray doesn't necessarily agree. Uh, if you're watching the show live, uh, you can tweet at Screen Drafts, hashtag Screen Drafts Live, hashtag Chat Film Fest. Uh, and you can d discuss uh, just, just you know, how unequivocally terrific all of these picks are and how you agree <laughs> with all of them across the board. All right, at 15, Graham has selected Phantasm. Oh, wow. Uh, wow. So, oh no wow um so uh phantasm uh don coscarelli's masterpiece about uh, an interdimensional uh mortician who uh is terrorizing a young boy uh with flying spheres of death um and uh is is enslaving uh an army of of dwarves uh on his home planet um I really love this movie. I don't think it deserves to be any higher than this. Um, I think it's it's a a horror classic for a reason. Uh, I think it's you know like when you sort of look at the pantheon of like you know the famous sort of slasher films you know of of this era you know and you're talking about like or not of the seventies and eighties talking about like Jason and Freddy and you know and Leatherface and Pinhead and all those that phantasm is always sort of floating around yeah. in there. And I think what's interesting about this movie is that it's, it's really kind of hard to define. Uh, it's a super weird movie. Uh, it's, it's totally surreal. Um, it's, it's a, it's a nightmare put on screen. Um, and uh, uh, I, I, I think that's why I've always really loved it. Um, so yeah, I mean, everybody, I, I feel like everybody knows phantasm. Um, and um so, you know, I'll, I'll go on ahead and for time's sake, pass it on to everybody else. But uh, I, I, I really love this movie. And I think that it's um, I, I think that it's it's deserving of a place on the list. I'm not sure any higher than this, though. All right. Thank you, Graham. At number 15, Phantasm, Chelsea. What um, is your take here? Yeah, I actually saw this film for the first time, uh, I think, last year when I was doing my tour with Satanic Panic. And uh 
Uh, I actually found it to be quite boring. Um, I wow, wasn't, okay. I know, I know maybe it's cause I'm All a little right. late to the party on it, but I will say that there are some really iconic things. Obviously the tall man is, is, you know, everyone knows who that is. There are Christmas ornaments that are the little like blade ball things. So you have to kind of <laughs> recognize the iconography it has. Um, I totally agree. I wouldn't put it any higher than this. If it was on this list was not on my list at all mm. or my sub lists, but, um, there is something to say for the, fr- and the franchise of it all too. So, um, I will not veto it. Okay. Um, Chelsea's not going to veto Billy Ray. This was my number 15 pick. Get um, out of Get out of town. And, and I was considering even playing it higher, possibly if it didn't get played. I was thinking about playing it at 12 if it did not got played. Um, I do think it needs to be on this list. I think it's, uh, I, I, I agree that I love this film as a kid. I'm a fan of this series, but I will say it has some drawbacks. Like it's a low budget film. The acting is a little stilted across the board. And you really recognize that stuff these now and this and some of the effects and stuff too. And I'll usually forgive that. Um, but I still love this film. I think it deserves a spot on this. I think it's an important film. I will not be vetoing this at 15. Right. Great pick, Graham. Clark, you, you've you been indicating uh, uh, something <laughs> Clark less, is than, not a fan uh, of this less than enthusiasm for this title. Do you have two vetoes uh, that you can use uh, are you going to use one here on on Phantasm? So here's what I say. I I totally get why people who saw this movie at a certain age or grew up on this movie, especially like not to uh, I don't want to generalize, but especially boys, young men. Like I get why this is important to them. Um, I also have a lot of respect for Don Coscarelli. Um, and think that his story of, of being this like really, uh, you know, this independent spirit, Mm -hmm. this creator, this guy who's going to get the movie made, the iconography, all of that. So I had a feeling it might show up on this list. Um, I agree it shouldn't be higher than 15. Um, so if I have to, then if I have to say, okay, then okay, I'm not burning a veto on it, but I do want to say you guys are really filling up some spots like I, i'm really you know <laughs> so anyway i'm not vetoing it and uh it's not my favorite either that's okay I'm okay there we go no, uh, no veto from clark and she does point out this the the uh salient point that spots are getting filled <laughs> spots are getting filled up at this point guys <laughs> yeah. um all right and they're getting fantastic. filled up well, and they're getting filled up in a great way. <laughs> uh, Clark, Clark, it is now your turn to fill up Ooh. one of these. Yay. Spots yourself. Yay. Woo, woo, woo. Finally. Yes. Spotlight. Okay. So, yes. oh, I have to text you my pick. Text or, or chat, <laughs> yes. Uh, but you can preamble uh, as you do. Okay. So basically, I do not, I will, st- will preface my pick by saying, I do not like this movie. Um, I, I don't get it. Okay. I don't Ooh. get what's scary about it. I don't get, I don't fucking get it. However, I have a feeling it's going to be on all of your lists. And I want, I think that if it's got to be on this list, then I don't want it in the top 10. Okay. So that's Ooh. my, that's my Clark, Clark says, uh, that she acknowledges this film's importance, wow. uh, but she wants to bury it as best wow. she can. I like that. Pulling a classic Clay Keller move. Th- yes, that this is, is a- literally like her first move ever on screen drafts. I like this play. I like this play. This is a completely fair way to play, as long as you explain yourself, mm-hmm. that I have caught a lot of shit for in the past, but it is 100% <laughs> legal. Um, okay. Uh, at number 14, Everybody else, I can tell you, are uh, on pins and needles waiting to find out what this could possibly be. It's the Wicker Man. Oh! Oh! oh. oh. What? Wow. wow. Okay. 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 <laughs> Clark, do you, you do you have anything else you want to say about the Wicker Man now that the title has been revealed? I don't like this movie. And <laughs> I think it's boring. And I don't get why it's scary at all. Mm. And 
I would rather watch the bees, not the bees, than the original <laughs> boring ass Wicker Man. <laughs> I also, it, fine, like whatever. It, it's no, this is not for me. Oh. <laughs> but I have a feeling it's probably for you guys and probably for the audience who's listening. Right. And so, yes, as I said, I don't want it in the top 10. Wow. Uh, yeah, I, a, 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 a film that you could make an argument is the second horror musical uh, on the list that far. <laughs> true, true. Uh, the Wicker Man. Chelsea, you were you were shocked. Um, yeah, I was trying to kind of guess um, in my mind what it might be because I Clark and I know each other pretty well. So I was trying to figure out what that, that might be. Um, however, surprisingly enough, Wicker Man was actually number 16 on my list. Oh, so I actually had it I even lower than that. I wish I could have my played list. it sooner. <laughs> <laughs> It was on my list. And I mean, for me, is this a movie I seek out? I watch it once a year on May Day because that's when it takes place. Uh, Beltane, obviously, Satanic Panic has a Beltane in it. I keep plugging my movie. Sorry about that. Um, but uh, for me, I loved that. It was sort of like a grown up because the stuff I'd been exposed to when I was younger was like with witches was the witches, Hocus right. Pocus, things like that. And then this was like the first like adult like witchcraft movie um i saw i think um and it's also a precursor to films like um midsummer but way better um and uh yeah so i like this film it's not you know again i had it even lower than this um so but it was on my list so but i will not veto it no veto from chelsea uh billy ray mark i don't like this movie either Wow. Wasn't surprised. even on my wow. list. Wasn't even on my list. I find it boring. I've always found it boring. Um, it's never done anything for me. Um, I, I hate that it's even here. Uh, <laughs> but if I were to but if I were to veto it, I, I have no guarantee that Graham or somebody wouldn't try to play or that Graham wouldn't try to play it higher. Um, so I yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna veto oh. this, but yeah, I'm not a fan <laughs> of the Wicker Man. Graham. Um yeah, this was my number eight. Um, I'm a big okay. fan of this movie. Um, I totally appreciate uh, the the feeling that it's boring and and not scary, uh, which weirdly for somebody that loves this movie so much, uh, like I agree with that. It is it is kind of it's a slow movie and it's not particularly scary. Mm -hmm. um, I I have a weird relationship with this movie because back when I was in college and this was recommended as one of the seminal horror films of all time, I watched. Wow. I felt the exact same way and I was like, this is boring and I don't get it and I don't get why it's so popular. And every couple of years, I would try to revisit it, and I always felt the same way. And for whatever reason, last year, on May Day, I decided to watch it, and it just finally clicked for me. Um, and I think that, you know, the, the, his journey um, as this, you know, e <clears throat> essentially evangelical Christian guy, uh, and, and the fact that he's um, sort of sucked into this just horrific end, uh, that happens so suddenly right at the end. Uh, it just, it, I don't know, it hit me in a, in a, in a weird way. And I finally kind of got it. And I watched it like three or four times over the next several days, just as just sort of a new obsession. So I like this movie a lot. I'm glad it's on the list. Uh, and I can accept it being at 14. It's fine. Um, I, I probably would have accepted it being lower, even if it's personally for me higher up. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that at least it's on the list. Uh, and I can certainly appreciate uh, your your qualms with it. It makes total sense. Okay, Clark is successful in her gambit to keep Wicker Man uh, as, as uh, low on the list as possible at number 14. All right, moving on to number 13. We have a, a pick from Chelsea here. Clark just pulled like a Bobby Fischer move. You must admit, like that is truly <laughs> Pretty good. some yeah, impressive... True. Impressive I listen. maneuvering. I listen. I love a I love a Clark <laughs> Wolf do. strategy. It's my favorite. Yeah. Thanks, Clark's, girl. Clark's gonna I'll own all you. of us tomorrow. I'll see you. Oh, I can't wait. I can't <laughs> wait. Own all this, of us. this actually do, might have worked out better than I had. I was very disappointed in the beginning, but now you guys are doing a lot of my work for me. So. <laughs> uh, I, I have a feeling we're gonna be doomed. I love so. <laughs> Yeah, famous love, last word. love the confidence. <laughs> love the confidence uh, from Clark. Uh, okay, here we go. I've gotten a, the number thirteen pick from Chelsea, which she has has designated as the lucky number thirteen. Mm -hmm. uh, this 
is a film called Race with the Devil. Oh, boy. Yeah, so... Kelsey, oh, Race with the Devil. Yeah, so I am... This is actually higher on my list, but I'm sort of thinking a little bit differently about this. So this movie um, has two of my favorite actors, Peter Funda and Warren Oates. Um, it is a huge influence for my own movie, Satanic Panic. If you didn't know, I directed that because I've been saying it a lot. Um, something about this movie that really resonated with me was that everyone was in on it and is something that obviously was in the script for my film. And I looked, I studied this movie. I looked at it, how they're trying to get out of a situation and the people just keep coming. An example of people at the wrong place at the wrong time and what happens to them. Um, and also I have a terrible fear of rattlesnakes. Um, I also love, <laughs> and I also love um, Winnebago's and traveling and taking road trips. And that this movie definitely like terrified me for a while after seeing it with things like that. Um, and of course, seeing like Peter Fonda and War Notes kicking ass is awesome. I think it's a really fun movie. It's a great um, road movie. It's also scary. There's really crazy fucked up shit happening in it and anyone who uses rattlesnakes to attack someone <laughs> is fucking terrifying um and uh the tagline for the poster is one of my favorites which is god help you when the devil wants oh, you good big fan That's of it tagline. huge influence to me so big fan of it huge influence billy ray if i'm not mistaken i i caught a little bit of audio off of you halfway through chelsea's speech and i believe you said no um <laughs> <laughs> you, you you are up in the veto order um yeah so this movie's fine top 20 of films of the 70s i don't know about that like that's a that's a that's a tough one uh, especially when you're saying that race i mean look I, i'm also i'm also the person that you know that said that faces of death is a better movie than like, more picture <laughs> show. so i understand i understand the problem there but when we're saying race of the race with the devil is better than Oh man, all the any of oh that's a tough one, but I've got one veto left. You've got I've only got single, I've only got one veto and I've got a veto. whole top ten tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Um I don't think I can waste a veto on this. And as much as I would love to, I would love to boot this, but I'm not <laughs> going to. Okay, Billy Ray is resigned. Uh he's not using his veto. Graham. Uh. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan. Do you want to influence Chelsea? You don't have a veto. But. I, I don't. Uh, influence Clark. Um, oh, I, Clark. Uh, yeah, sorry. I, I, yeah, I, I don't have a veto. I just want to say that, um, you know, I, I had never seen this movie before, and it had always been on lists of like awesome movies to watch. So I watched this uh, this past week for the first time. I loved it. I thought it was a total blast from start to finish. I would love to go to like a midnight screening of this in a packed theater and just like scream along with the crowd. Like it, it's great. Um, I had this sort of jockeying for my number 20 position with mm -hmm. a bomb with um uh with it was like basically jockeying with the abominable dr fives position because i feel like this is also a very it's a super fun movie um it's a a, a blast to watch um I, i'm just not sure if i would have played it quite this low that said i can't do anything about it i'm glad it's on the list it's a great movie it's super fun and um you know if this gets more people to watch it like then they totally should i mean this is like it's it's a uh i mean it's a, a, a it's a it, it's a it's a deep cut it's essentially like mad max with satan <laughs> yeah that's like, a great way kinda, to, yeah you know it. like it's super fun i love this movie so anyway no uh, yeah it's great but clark. a deep cut at 13 yeah <laughs> yeah clark a deep cut at 13. i mean veto it and see what happens no <laughs> no ma'am absolutely not um yeah so uh i chelsea directed satanic panic i have a quick cameo in satanic panic so we i went to a lot of screenings of this movie i heard chelsea talk a lot about how this movie was a big influence on her um i had a feeling that she was gonna play it so i watched it uh last night actually and i totally see the similarities like some of the you know i totally see the the direct influence from race of the devil to satanic panic um i also agree with billy ray i think this movie's fine um i just think that the concepts have been done better the 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 you know whether it's satanists in the woods whether it is uh you know action whether it is the whole town's in on it like i i just think it's done it's been done better and so i don't think it belongs at number 13 however again i'm not i'm not blowing a veto on this one so she gets her pick. 
Clark, Clark is fixing to rain veto hellfire next game. Next <laughs> week, tomorrow, tomorrow. Tomorrow like he's going to own this all is of us. Be, yeah, this, <laughs> oh why, do you, God. why do you think I'm not vetoing it? I'm saving my veto and my override for the madness of tomorrow. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, nice. we're going to. Oh, man. I am, I am growing increasingly terrified of how we're going to get through tomorrow's episode in two hours. Oh, but we're going to do it. Uh, okay, at number 13. It's staying. Chelsea gets on a, a massive influence on her film, Satanic Panic, Race with the Devil. Well done. Ooh. There are two picks left. Two picks left today. Uh, one belonging yeah. to Billy Ray and one belonging to Graham. Mm -hmm. Billy Ray is up first well, with the number 12. This is what I'm going to say very quickly. I, 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 going into that 13 pick, there were 13 films to me that had to be in the top 13 that were just uh, stone cold classics. Now one of those is uh, going to get left off. So for my number 12 out of those 13 picks, I'm playing the one that out of those 13 is my least favorite, which it's still a, like a five star movie, but it's my least favorite of those now, films. So B B Billy Ray, you know, uh, to be fair, uh, you know, you, you can try and abdicate responsibility as much as you like. You do. You could have vetoed race with the devil. Oh, I, yeah. I sure. Else? I sure could have. Have and then okay. set myself up for total disaster tomorrow, which I will not do. <laughs> okay, <sighs> here we go. This is yeah, as, as as all of you have said, there are ten or fifteen uh, equally great classics that are going to need to be in some oh order on God. this list. Uh, and this happen? is one that I that I I maybe would have assumed uh, we were going to talk about tomorrow, but we're going to talk about it today. At number twelve, Billy Ray has selected. Suspiria. Actually, I'm fine with that. Oh, my um, Suspiria, the 1977 oh. film uh, yeah. from Dario Argento, um, about a as everybody knows what Suspiria is about a young American ballet student, and um, she gets involved in a dance academy. It turns out that they're witches. Witches. Oh no. Witches. I love this film. I absolutely adore this film. I've seen it probably on, on actually large screens four or five times. I got to see that amazing 4K restoration with that incredible sound. All of, It was just like a totally visceral experience. I also think, I think there's some issues with the film. I think it lags in places. I, I think it has some definite pacing issues. I think there are some performance issues, which makes sense given all the circumstances. Um, but I love this film right now. We're talking about the difference between like five star films and five star films and which ones just resonate with me more. And out of that list, this is the one that, that resonates the least. I have a so question for you, Billy Ray. Uh, when we had our recent Jalo draft, uh, with Elric Kane and Rebecca McKendry from Shockwaves, they sort of agreed that Suspiria, um, while a great movie, is not a, a giallo do you agree with that assessment i would agree with their assessment of that i i don't think it's i don't think it probably fits the definitions of a giallo film um i certainly think dario argento has made more more faithful giallo films than suspiria still an amazing fucking movie doesn't have to be a giallo film um no, of course i was just curious it, yeah. yeah and it's in number 12 <laughs> Uh, Chelsea, at number 12, uh, uh, your revelation may have gotten uh, missed underneath uh, Billy Ray's speech, but but you said Suspiria was was what the number pick for you? Yes, 12. Oh, incredible. Wow. Good job. Yeah. Um, and I uh, actually, it may have been, may, wait, it might have been 14. Anyways, it was in the, it's in this section. It's a better story but... if it's 12. Let's say 12. <laughs> it's, it was your it's 12. 12, sure. I have to look yeah. again, but... Um, yeah, I uh, I just did a podcast about this this movie. I was jockeying between when I was doing my list, um, Deep Red and Suspiria, sure. because a lot of people, you know, Deep Red's another one. I love, you know, Argento, everything up to everything until 1990. Everything after that, I just can't do. But um, uh, I I love Suspiria. I think it's a very accessible Argento film um, for people that might be hesitant. Uh, and I've seen Goblin Live. I've seen many of his movies uh, screened. So this will definitely not get a veto from me. No veto from Chelsea. Uh, I will say, you know, uh, I've been focusing on this. So I have not been really following the Twitter feed, although I did just catch a tweet out of the corner of my eye. Um, longtime listener Joe Grabinski tweeted, at you, Graham, he's saying he, this needs to be vetoed. Uh, but you don't have a veto. So really, this would, uh, I mean, this would fall on, on Clark if she wants to. Uh, Graham, what do you have to say about Suspiria at number 12? Uh, yeah, it was it was much higher up on my list. I mean, it was it was my number seven. Um, and, but again, I mean, what Billy Ray said is like, this is 
a bunch of five star films. So yeah. it's kind of hard to argue like with it at number twelve. I think the 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 um, criticisms of that it's slow in places and that you know I think it I think it starts super high and then I think it ends super high. Yeah. Um. Uh. And and in the middle, you know, it gets a little muddy. Um. But uh. Yeah. It was higher for me. But I mean, hey, you know, it's on the list. It's at number twelve. This is a really hard list to put together of a lot of like total classics. So yeah. what are you going to do? What are you going to do, Clark? Are you going to do anything? Uh, I'm not clay. Uh, you know, I think that, uh, I agree with everything that's been said. I really enjoy this movie. Um, obviously it's caught on enough to where it was recently remade. Uh, and you know, I think that it also is a great gateway for a lot of people to find Argento. Um, so I think that's great. And and Chelsea, I think, put it beautifully. It's very accessible, so that's cool. Um, for me, this is about where it fell. Um, and so, yeah, I think 12 is a great place for Suspiria. 12, all right. Well, hey, th then that's the final word. Suspiria is locked in at number 12. R Ryan, you're over there kind of <laughs> doing your, 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 your patented pursed lip, <laughs> slow head shake. Uh, did you think Suspiria would be a, a tomorrow title? No, I, yeah, I thought it was going to be a tomorrow title. I, it's it's shocking. This is a shocking place for this. Uh, uh, for me, the double murder in the beginning is like one of the greatest fucking things like ever, ever committed to film. And then it just gets weirder from there. I don't know. Suspiria is like, a, you know, this is a tough one for me, I have to say. I'm slightly hurt. <sighs> Ryan is going through it over hey, there on the, list, on the other so. end of the table. <laughs> it is yeah. on the list. It You're made right. it. That's true. It mm -hmm. did make it. Number 12 uh, is pretty good. You know, we got a lot left. of classics left. Like everything. Yeah, there's left so many. Could be Suspiria a is one of them. Classic. Billy Ray. Suspiria and is exactly one of them. why it just got played. Uh. It's exactly why it just got played. Because <laughs> it's one of them. Yeah. All right. I could have done an alphabetical order. Bring us home, Graham. Bring us home. Okay. I think I know what I'm going to do. Number 12. Uh, Graham, you get to make the final pick of Oof. the day. Yes. You guys, eleven. You guys, this is tough. This is really tough. Oh God. Um. All right. I'm. Hmm. I'm waiting for the text. It is tough. Are you? Are you I've torn texted between? You. I've texted you. Got it. Are, are you torn, torn between, between three. several titles? Or, or yeah, or I what had was three. Thinking I had this? three titles. All these could be in the top ten, but I feel like. The other two titles are perhaps a touch more influential than this one. So that's why they edged it out to make it into the top 10 for me. Uh, but this is Interesting. Uh, an amazing I film. am curious to find out what those other films are because this film, I guess, this series of remakes of a film are, have been very influential. But yeah, I guess this particular film, perhaps not as uh. much as, as the original version, uh okay. what are we talking about here i think i know what you're talking about i think i clark, might know clark clark and chelsea have got it figured out maybe, <laughs> maybe. ryan has no idea but ryan you're gonna find out in a second because bud i'm gonna tell you okay you ready yeah okay here we go at number 11 with the final pick of part one of the screen draft 70s horror mega draft graham skipper has selected Invasion of the Body Snatcher. Yeah, that's what I thought you did. <laughs> Ram. Um, Invasion veto. of the Body Snatcher. Veto. Billy Ray wow. is vetoing right away. <laughs> All right, Billy Ray jumped the veto All order. Right. There it yeah, is. There veto. It is. Okay. Great. Got the sound as well. Uh, got the sound. Uh, you you cannot shake the Chattanooga Film Festival team. No. Uh, they are on top of it. Oh, there's Donald. Yeah. Uh, okay. Sorry, Graham. Billy No, Ray. it's okay. I love this movie. I mean, I, you know, it's, it's brilliant. So it'll, it'll, I'm sure it'll make it into the top 10, which is oh. great. Um, yes. Usually when the veto order is jumped, that means, <laughs> that means there's passion, uh, and, and, and a desire to move the film up. So we will see if, if that plays out tomorrow. Okay. Invasion of the Body Snatchers veto. Graham, you get to play one of the other films you were thinking of. All right. Well, I... I'm not sure I'm going to make any friends with this one, oh, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and play oh, it. Jesus. All right. Graham is not here to make friends. <laughs> uh, interesting. Okay. Okay. You know what, Graham? Oh uh, yeah. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to try and, uh, uh, and influence and, anybody. And, and, and again, I just want to say, this is, again, these are all five star films that I love very much. This is uh -oh. tough. So, <laughs> Okay. And again, all classics, all classics. 
Um, all right. At number 11. With the final, we'll see. We'll see if this is the final pick of today's show. Might not Graham be. has selected. Bob Clark is back, y'all. This is Black Christmas. No. Wow. Um, so, so Black Christmas, this is where I'm not going to make many friends. Uh, I, I appreciate this movie very much. And this is obviously a really well-made film. Um, sort of similar, I think, Clark, to you and The Wicker Man. I, I have never found this movie particularly scary. I, I appreciate it. And I appreciate uh, uh, Clay is shocked that I would say such a thing. I'm d- um, I, 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 shocked and delighted. Um, I'm not, not delighted because I agree. Delighted because I love I love messy shit. This is great. Go. Continue. I I am um, continue digging your hole. Graham. I know. I, I just I I, I I really again I really appreciate it. it's a really well made film. I just I when I look at all the movies that we have left here, um, include and is, especially the ones that I'm like waffling between. It's like these are all like classics of the genre and the other ones I just enjoy watching more than Black Christmas. But it's Graham. not to dilute the power of Black Christmas. It's not to dilute the, you know, the importance of it. Um, but, uh, and, and maybe it's because like growing up, like this was not, um, I didn't see this movie until, until college. Um, I, Graham. this was never Graham. like, a, Graham. Graham. uh-huh. We visited uh, the demon. The, the demon wants to say something. We visited the house. You. I know went we did. To the Black Christmas house, and you said Wait, it was I, one of your favorite. I, Graham, movies. your personal friends with, <laughs> friends with the, the Chad Film Festival demon. I know that we went to the house, and I appreciate going to the house. I'm not saying I don't like this movie. But I'm just saying of the films that we have left. The day, you. You were talking like it was one of your favorite movies, and this is now just confusing. You're the of the house, demon. <laughs> Look. Look, we can work this out later, Demon. We have to <laughs> here. And I have a strong feeling that I might get vetoed. We were both there. <laughs> we both know what happened. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll let you go. We, <laughs> okay. We were both there. What is happening I, right now? <laughs> so I did visit the house with the Demon. Uh, yeah, I get, I like this movie. This movie's good. It's, it's, I'm just, all right. Graham likes this movie. Graham likes this it. movie. It's good. Uh, he went to the house and uh, he has, uh, <laughs> He has some work he has to do to repair his friendship with the, the Chattanooga demon. Film Festival demon. Uh, but that's something you guys are going to have to The demon is deal deeply with. offended. Um, yes. I, 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 yeah, I'm so flustered. I have to read. Well, what is the veto order here? It's Chelsea. Chelsea. I'm fucking <laughs> um, uh, uh, Yeah. Black Christmas this, at this, number 11. This movie is uh, listed in my top five of this list. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, right. I think this movie has a very different relationship for women than it does for men. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, you know, it's dealing with a lot of things um, that we deal with all day, every day. Um, but, uh, and I have a very strong relationship with this movie. Um, it's also dealing with issues of abortion. Roe v. Wade passed well, only a year before this movie was made. So um, it's multi-layered. There's gaslighting going on. However, I do want it on the list. So I'm nervous about a... I think it belongs I, in I the top 10. No, it belongs I in the top five. Mm. But I, will say I don't no want it to question. get... I don't think that it's going to... Look, the, for me, there's still... There's 10 movies here that, that need to get on the list. And one of them will get played number 11. I don't think you need to worry about it not making it on the list. Feel free to veto. I know I'm in the minority on Here's this. Here's the thing. Yeah, but, you know, like, Again, I, I don't hold, like hold to... Hold on. Hold on. Not yeah. done yet. I like that. Uh, yes. Easy does it. Um, uh, but I'm nervous as to what the other pick might be if it does right. get vetoed okay, so right. i'm in a in a pickle however mm-hmm. i only have one veto and i know yeah. miss clark wolf has two so oh. Uh, oh, sure. i don't know if i may want to save it for tomorrow because i want it on this list i want it in the top five um so okay. yeah i might i want to Let- hear from Clark, let me, I think. Let me okay, add really yeah, quickly so like, onto this. Uh, so this was my number one pick. Uh, uh-huh, uh-huh. This was oh, my number one pick. Yeah. Um, Clark, if you veto this, I will not override anything you play tomorrow. <laughs> oh. I will not override got, anything oh. you play. Message receives. Alliance Message is being made. Clark, uh, you've had a lot of people uh, 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 try to influence you, I'm but now it is your you. decision. Are you going uh, to veto Black Christmas at number 11? 
Black Christmas is in my top five, so I will be vetoing this okay. choice. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank Back you. Thank the drawing you. board, Graham. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Yes. Then okay. I get to go with the, the last one that I, yeah, I'm just double checking. Everyone yeah. is vindicated in that. Video. That's great. Woo. Including, Clark. including the demon. <laughs> including including the, the demon. demon. Uh, Clark uh, uses one of her vetoes to push Black Christmas to tomorrow. Uh, and, and you know, I, I, I hope everybody is, is remembers this tomorrow because it has happened before where everybody agrees something should be vetoed to go higher and then when you and get to the higher not. spots shit changes so uh, it will 100 percent make the list yeah okay yeah. okay billy ray's uh, making alliances and promises for tomorrow uh so see how that plays out all right graham Me you've been vetoed <laughs> twice in a row here <laughs> Uh, but not unprecedented for you. No, can no, we go for not. three? Can, can we make yeah. it three? <laughs> Let's see. Let's, Let's see. What happens. We've this got we've got ten minutes left. We've got time for a couple more vetoes. At number eleven, Graham, third time's the charm, perhaps, has selected the omen. Right. Okay. Oh, great. Well, it's the omen. We all know the omen. Uh, I I rewatched the omen two nights ago, and it. Uh, I actually had it lower on my list uh, at the beginning of trying to plan all this. And then I rewatched it and it just like really super hit me. Like all the, the father son stuff was like totally devastating to me. Um, you know, all of uh, j just the, the whole, you know, his relationship with his adopted mom uh, was just like, like so crushing, you know, and everything. I, I, uh, I, the movie totally creeped me out. Um, and, you know, it's obviously like one of the, the sort of, you know, top, horror films of all time so uh it, pr it probably would have been like my number 10 had i been waffling around and i think it just you know if i was talking about this versus black christmas you know it just affects me in a different way and so that's why i would play it that way same with um invasion of the body snatchers literally the only reason why it edged out over that was because i felt like it, it's a more uh classically influential like great horror film of the 70s um, but I, I, you know, Eleven's a great place for the Omen. Uh, it's a classic film, and uh, I'm happy to have it here. And I'm happy that everybody's you know seems to be more in agreement with that. I want I want copacetic-ness, everybody. Graham just wants everyone to get along. Uh, the, and the, the Omen has a couple of the yeah, most creative uh, and and uh, what's that demon? The demon said something. I just said, you know, me, Graham? Graham maybe I don't know. Got, got me fooled, fooled Graham. <laughs> I, I speak demons. So. <laughs> the demon is still still hurt from the last pick. The demon is just trolling, Graham. <laughs> um, the just, demon's got some personal bit, personal I shit. I just think that, <laughs> you know you should be consistent. That's all. I, you know, it's whatever you think is fair is fair. I'm not gonna kind of you know tell you how to live your life, but you know, you know. <laughs> it's, oh my God. it's it's fair demon it's fair okay yeah, yeah fair is fair fair is fair fair is fair you know all right the demon's not going right. to tell you how to live your life graham uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um okay anyway the the, the 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 omen has has a couple of of kills that are incredibly inventive that that i love uh is all i wanted uh, to say um uh before yeah. the demon uh <laughs> had to get some stuff off of his chest um Chelsea, the omen. Um, I actually had this in my top 10. Um, I am a huge fan of this movie. I saw it when I was really young. I love it. I love that the, di the, the devil's a child. I love that there's no mm -hmm. possession involved. He's just born the Antichrist. Um, and uh, Jerry, Gold Jerry Goldsmith won an Oscar for this score of this movie, which is so iconic. It's the only thing he ever won for. He like was nominated like 18 times and won for this movie. Um, and it's so iconic and I'm totally stoked to have it at uh, number 11. I think it deserves to be on the list and that's a good spot for it. It's a good spot. Billy Ray, do you agree um, that this is a good spot? Um, I had it at 18. So, I mean, it's a little high for me. I've never loved this uh -huh. film as much as a lot of people do. I, I, the kills are great, but I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm certainly, I can't veto it. So there's nothing I can do about it being at 11. And I don't think I would anyway. I think this is a fine place for it. 
We should what? play this first. We should play this first. <laughs> <laughs> Could have saved so many vetoes. Yes. Um, yes, I'm I'm in agreement, actually. I love this movie. I think it's excellent. I think I had it at 10. But um, that that's, you know, as we're going to get into, that's simply because there are so many great movies that are just fighting it out you know, for the same spot. So I think 11 is a great place for the omen. And I'm really glad it's this high on the list because I think a lot of times there's this impulse to be like, it's not that scary, it's not that good, it's overrated, whatever. And I actually think the omen is a great film just like, you know, it's a great horror movie, but I think it's also a great movie. Yeah, Richard Donner. I think it's a great place for it. Yes. All right. Everybody agrees. This is a, uh, except for Billy Raven, he'll put up with it. This is a good spot <laughs> for the omen. Folks, we got through the we did first it. We did 10 it. picks. Woo-hoo! Minutes to spare. Drafts, yeah. Mega draft, 70s horror mega draft, part one. Uh, Billy Ray, really quickly, I am going to give you an opportunity to correct the record. Uh, earlier on in the show, I jokingly, uh, said that you had declared that Faces of Death was a better film than Eraserhead. I have caught some Twitter chatter um, perpetuating <laughs> that misquote that I said as a joke. Uh, uh, would you like to clear the, the, the record between Eraserhead and Faces of Death? I will say that Eraserhead is a better made film, uh-huh. but that Faces of Death is a film that I get more enjoyment out of. Gotcha. So wow. subjective, subjectively. Wow. Yes, yeah. but I'm, I mean, I'm obviously trying get, I'm trying to get this noose off around your from around your neck here, Billy Ray. Well, no, no I just it's I love David Lynch, big David Lynch fan. Eraserhead is not one of my favorite Lynch films. I think he evolved as a filmmaker. All right, there we go. Um, okay, hey, and we got uh, five minutes to spare. Well done, everybody. R- Ryan, <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> this slate of picks thus far we, we've got Ooh. we're 10 we're halfway through we're gonna get the the uh picks 11 through one tomorrow uh if you want to give us your your Im- Im- impressions here for a couple of minutes and then i'm going to set up to tomorrow's episode i mean i think this is this is this is a good list today. I think there's, you know, look, overall, I think what is so fascinating and fun about 70s horror are there are moments when, like Clark just said about The Omen, where these are great, great films on top of kind of being separated from the genre and saying, oh, they're great horror movies. A lot of these, especially what we're walking into tomorrow, these are like great, some of the greatest films of the 70s besides being, you know, um, great horror movies. So I feel like this was a great beginning in terms of setting a Aside our personal loves and favorites and things that kind of strike our fancy. But but Clay, tomorrow is the real deal. Tomorrow to me is really like where I'm putting all of my money, honestly, in terms of- Oh, you are actually betting on this. Yes, of course. Oh, okay. um, so uh, <laughs> tomorrow is all I really care about in terms of that that wager. So DM Ryan at Ryan 625 if you want to get in on that side action. Absolutely, for, for I'm, t- I'm taking episode. bets from everyone uh, and we can talk privately, so. Uh, all right, Ryan, uh, that is what you're looking forward to tomorrow. This is what the game is going to look like tomorrow. So these are picks 11 through 1. Mm-hmm. We're going to start at the same time, uh, which is 12 Pacific, 3 Eastern. Uh, and same drafters back. And this is what the lay of the land is tomorrow. Tomorrow belongs to the women. Mm-hmm. Really, Clark and Chelsea each have three picks, uh, and they each have a veto. Billy Ray and Graham each have two picks and no vetoes between them. Billy Ray does still have his veto override. Uh, However, I'm going to introduce a wrinkle, and this is a way that the viewing audience can get involved here. Interesting. Uh, So pay close attention. Okay. For tomorrow, we are going to award an extra bonus veto to one of our drafters based on a poll that is going to be up uh, on the Screen Drafts Twitter uh, pretty soon after this episode ends. So at follow at Screen Drafts, and we're going to put up a poll uh, with these four drafters' names, and you, the listening audience, can vote up until game time tomorrow on who you want to be awarded an extra veto. I'm now going to give the drafters 30 seconds each to make a plea for why it should be them. Clark, go. I think it should be me because I haven't gotten to do much so far. (laughs) And so I think that I should have even more power. Uh, No, but also I think that if you've watched the game today, I think that you can see that I'm listening to the group. 
And so as I elect to nominate films, I think having another veto would be good for me to have. Said. Okay, Graham. Uh, I, I think that Billy and Billy Ray and I are fucked in this poll. Uh, so <laughs> probably, um, yeah. So, so uh, uh, but yeah, <coughs> hey, if, if you, I, I don't think there's going to be too much chaos tomorrow because, like, I'm looking at this and there's like ten films that need to be on there. Uh, uh, I just would say just don't give it to Billy Ray because he's the only wild card here. Uh, Graham you says don't at all. Me. Not at all. Graham says don't give it to Billy Ray. Chelsea, why should you get the extra veto? Um, I want to help make sure that the films that the fans love and adore make it on that top 10. Mm. So right. Clark and I will want to do our best to make that happen. And hopefully the who, whoever you pick wants to make that happen too. Nice. But All that's right. my strategy is get these movies we love on there. Chelsea's playing for the fans. Billy Ray, do you think you can convince everybody to give you an extra veto? I'll say this. I am also trying to get the best films on the top 10. Uh, as Graham said earlier, we're done fucking around. I've already told you I would have played Black Christmas at number one. So that should tell you that I'm not playing <laughs> random shit. Um, there's a discernible, definitive top 10 that needs to happen. I think if anybody's going to mess that up, it's going to be Graham Skipper. <laughs> so you do not need to give him a veto. I don't care if you give it to me. Just don't give it to Graham. Okay. But I would like you to give it to me um they've got vetoes already i don't have another veto let's have some fucking fun y'all throw me some throw me a bone throw billy ray a bone all right everybody uh that concludes this half of the screen draft 70s horror movies mega draft uh follow us if you want to vote in this poll go to at screen drafts we're going to put that up in a little bit thank you to chattanooga film festival You're we welcome. are excited to be back with you guys tomorrow at the same time thank you to the demon uh, and one last time, the first half mm -hmm. of the draft looks like this. Yeah. Number 20, Eraserhead. Number 19, The Abominable, Dr. Fives. Number 18, Solo, or The 120 Days of Sodom. Number 17, Rocky Horror Picture Show. Number 16, Faces of Death. Number 15, Phantasm. Number 14, The Wicker Man. Number 13, Race with the Devil. Number 12, Suspiria. And number 11, the Omen, we will be back with the top 10 tomorrow. Bye, Thanks, everybody. Guys. Thanks, everybody. Bye, Thank guys. You. you know, you think that you know somebody. And you think <laughs> that you have a friend. And then they go and say that they didn't really like Black Christmas. And it's, yeah, it hurts. Yeah. <laughs> It Graham, honestly what you done? hurts, and I, this is nothing against the Screen Drafts podcast. I think that they're all doing a great job, but you know, it. I, I just don't know what to believe anymore, and I just wish that I had a friend. I wish I had a friend. Graham, you. Really? Right, um, You've destroyed the. I guess uh, this is it until tomorrow. Um. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Graham, I hope you're Demon, happy. I'll, I'll, make, I'll make it up. Goodbye. I'll make it up to you, Demon. <laughs> <laughs>